Today I want to share one of my all-time favorite novels with you, and why I recommend writers read When Demons Walk by Patricia Briggs. This novel is one that I find myself rereading every couple of years because I love the story and the characters so much. It truly lingers with me. Briggs accomplishes this by knowing when to follow the rules and tropes of her genre and when to break them so that the story becomes interesting and surprising to her readers. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers in this way, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with You Don't Have to Be the Best. The main character in When Demons Walk is a mage, which is a common trope in fantasy novels. But unlike other mages in the genre, this one is not a master level. They're not the best at wielding magic. They're good, but they're not amazing. The reader is reminded of this with lines like, She watched with a keen appreciation the deft touch of the king's sorcerer as he wove a warding spell similar to her own but infinitely more complex, without resorting to any obvious motion to aid his work. Before this moment, the reader has seen the main character, Sham, successfully work some smaller spells, so they know she's a competent mage. They've also heard her talk about the old man, her master, the one who taught her magic, and how much better he is than her. In this moment, we get to see that difference in skill level. We can see the difference between a master and a journeyman. Having Sham not be the best mage, or even a really, really good mage, is key to the success of the character and the story. Because Sham can't always rely on her magic, she has to rely on other skills and talents as well. She has to be clever, gritty, charming, all sorts of different things in order to be successful in her story. This means that she has to be a much more rounded character than one who is just an expert mage and can rely on magic at all times. This makes Sham more interesting and more relatable, because people often aren't the best at anything. There's only one person who's truly the best in any given field in the world, and that limits the relatability of that character. So when your character is good at what they love or what they do, but not the best, then readers can relate to that because they are probably good at something that they do in their lives, but not the best. Making Sham a journeyman also means she has to be good at other things, so she's not just good at magic. Sham is a thief in this story, and she has to use those skills to really survive in this world. That is also more interesting than someone who is only focused on and good at one thing when they have lots of different skills and have a full life backstory behind them that readers can experience through their skills, they're more interesting and again, more relatable. Another trope Briggs alters with Sham is the beautiful heroine. Sham is not beautiful. She's pretty, but she's not the stunning, drop dead gorgeous woman a lot of heroines are. She's slender, meaning she can pass for a teenage boy. And she does this on many occasions. She can adjust her wardrobe to appear as a messenger or as a mistress. Sham is aware of how she looks and she knows how to use that to her advantage. Here's an example. Everyone knew the Reeve had never taken a mistress, so she, Sham, had to be extraordinary. With her angular features and slender body, that left her wardrobe. Briggs constantly reminds the reader that Sham is not beautiful with lines like this, I think that's because the default for a lot of readers is to imagine the characters as beautiful. Briggs is letting the reader know Sham doesn't have low self-esteem. She knows how others perceive her, but she's not embarrassed by it. She doesn't wish she was prettier. She is happy with it. She is able to use it to her advantage. By making Sham pretty but not beautiful, Briggs allows her to be a chameleon. She allows her to wear disguises in a way that someone who is truly beautiful cannot succeed with. Playing with stereotypes and tropes in this way is important for today's readers, because today's readers, more so than the ones before, want to see themselves in that characters. That means they want to see characters who are different genders, different races, have different skill levels, have different abledness when it comes to their bodies. They like that variety. So when you imagine your character's features and skill level, 
ask yourself, is the beautiful expert necessary to your story and your character? Or is that just a stereotype you might be falling back on? Would a pretty journeyman be a more successful character for your story? Briggs also breaks point of view. For the majority of When Demons Walk, Briggs uses third-person close point of view to follow Sham around on her journey. But at key moments, she breaks that and switches into a third-person close point of view of the main antagonist, the demon itself. An example of this is, the mild irritation it felt toward the Reeves' mistress flamed to momentary rage. It calmed itself by deciding the woman would be its next meal, seven days hence. Until then, she could do little harm. These moments of the demon's perspective are key to creating tension and suspense because they let the reader know the danger the main character is in that the main character doesn't know. They also show how intelligent the demon is, and a smart monster is a lot scarier than a dumb monster. So that also heightens the suspense and the tension in the story. It raises the stakes. And without the demon perspective, the reader couldn't know these things because Sham and the other characters don't know them. When an author switches points of view, it should be for a reason like this. It should be because there is something about your story you cannot get across in the other point of view. Multiple point of view stories are fairly common, but what's different about Briggs is that it's 90% Sham's third person point of view and 10% the demons. Normally, there's more of a balance between those point of views. Usually when you have this imbalance in point of view, it's because the character who has less point of view sections really doesn't need to be a point of view character. But in Briggs' case, they did. I'd also like to note that the demon's point of view is formatted in italics, so it's crystal clear when the reader is in Sham's third-person point of view and when they're in the demon's third-person point of view. Normally, I'm not a big fan of large blocks of italic text because it can be exhausting to read, but the demon's point of view sections are very short and they don't occur that often, so Briggs gets away with it. When you're switching point of view in your story, make sure it's clear which point of view you are switching from and which point of view you're switching into. There are lots of ways you can do this. You can use italics. You can also use chapter headings, section breaks, the character's name in the first line, all sorts of things. I'd also like to cover beginning a fantasy novel. Writers are often told never start with backstory and never start with the weather. That's because these two things can be pretty boring and it can mean that you're not starting in the right place in your story. Readers want to dive into your story. They don't want to dive into the history of your story. But Briggs starts with both of these, and she starts in media res. Here are her first few lines. Sham sat on a low stone fence in the shadows of an alley pulling on her boots. In the darkness that even the moonlight failed to reach, a sea breeze caressed her hair. She drew in a deep breath of fresh air. Even the sea smelled different here in the hilly area of Lansend. The Sibelian conquerors, like the Southwood nobles before them, had chosen to make their homes far from the wharves. Briggs gets away with starting with backstory and the weather because they are essential to the reader's understanding not only of the story as a whole, but of this scene and this moment. She also starts with action. The character is in the process of pulling on her boots. She's about to go on a thieving mission. And Briggs weaves in the weather to show the setting and to show that it's night and it's a good time for thieving. Then she weaves in the backstory to show the stakes. Without that backstory, the reader might just think, oh, this character could get caught and arrested. But it's much more serious than that because this character's country has recently been taken over by another country. If you are thinking about beginning with the weather or backstory, ask yourself why. Is it because those two things are necessary for your reader understanding this scene and this moment? Or is it because you want to get that in now so you don't have to do it later? The latter is not a good enough reason. Your first section needs to hook your readers. It needs to grip them and pull them into your story. And beginning with history and the weather doesn't often do that. Next, I'd like to share an editor's love for When Demons Walk by Patricia Briggs. I mentioned earlier this is one of my favorite novels. I became enamored with this novel before I was a writer, and I'll probably need a new copy soon because mine is getting worn out. 
when you come across a novel that speaks to you in this way, that you want to read again and again, and that you wear out the pages and the spine of, read that novel one more time and pay attention to the techniques that writer is using. What are they doing that's pulling you in so intensely? What rules are they breaking and what rules are they following? Are they using the traditional tropes of that genre or not? Once you can tease out the techniques that writer is using, try applying them to your own writing. If you loved it so much in that story, your readers might love it too. Patricia Briggs' When Demons Walk lingers with me because it breaks the rules and tropes of its genre. It doesn't have a beautiful expert protagonist. It uses a less of an expert pretty protagonist. And it switches points of view in a way that usually writers can't get away with if they're traditionally publishing. It also breaks the rules of starting with backstory and the weather. All of these things work together to make this story stand out from others like it. What other rules and tropes do you believe Patricia Briggs breaks in When Demons Walk? Share them in the comments below. And for more videos teaching you how to tease out the techniques successful writers are using in their stories, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a chart comparing the different points of view. And now it's your turn. Look for moments in your story where you can change things up, switch a stereotype, break a rule, play with a trope to ignite your ink.